This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at an example that covers equity accounting within the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So if we read the requirement first, which is there down towards the bottom, uh, what it wants us to go through and do is it wants us to prepare a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the Vader group. So Vader must be the parent and it wants there, is it the year ended? The 31st of December 20x5. Okay, so remember when you're looking at profit or loss and other comprehensive income, it's always important to note the year end date, isn't it? So that if there is any mid year acquisition, we prorate things correctly. Uh, so let's understand the group structure, which I think is there. Is it at the start of the question? So part one, it says on the 1st of July, 20x5. So that's part way through the year, isn't it? Uh, Vade required 80% of the equity shares of Maul. So Maul is the subsidiary. We have an 80% holding. So does that then mean that there is a 20%? non-controlling interest and also as well boom it was on the 1st of July so does that mean there that we are going to consolidate the six months of the year okay uh, so we have a subsidiary in mall in number two it says on the 1st of May 20x5 uh, we acquired a 25% of the equity shares of SIF and exerted significant influence through its representation on the board of directors. So SIF must be an associate. So that associate, we will equity account in the statement of profit or loss. So we will take our share of the profits for the year. Uh, but when we're looking at our share of the profits for the year, we're going from the 1st of May 20x5 to the end of December. Count on your fingers. I think is that there's eight months, isn't it? Eight twelfths. Okay. Uh, so, what have we got in terms of the accounts? Uh, we have got the Vader, haven't we? Which is the parent. We have Maul. And remember, we want, is it six twelfths of all of Maul's results, are, isn't it? Okay. Uh, other bits and pieces that we can go through and consider as we then start to work the question. Uh, what have we got? During the year, Vader also sold goods to Maul. Uh, so is Vader the parent? Sold goods to Maul, uh, the subsidiary. Uh, so you've got the some intra-company sales. Uh, you have a markup, is it, of 25%. And we had sold half, so half is left in inventory, isn't there? So there's going to be, is it some form of pup adjustment and also some intra-company sales? Uh, it's the group policy to measure the non-controlling interest at fair value. So that's going to be important if there is any impairment in the subsidiary, isn't there? Because we need to put that in S's column so that the non-controlling interest get their share. And as it turns out, in part five, it says goodwill has been impairment tested and found to have fallen by five million in mall. So mall is the sub and two million in SIF and SIF is the associate. And it specifically says that, that we throw those impairments into admin expenses or at least it will be for the sub. Uh, any impairment in the associate, we will go through there and put it in that one line item share of profit of associate. Uh, mall in number six again is that the sub revalued its land and buildings at the year end and record the revaluation surplus of 50 million through OCI. So that there is the 50 million gain. That's part of is it number six. So we said we prorate all of S's result, but not the revaluation gain because that took place, didn't it, at the year end. So it's not something that accrues. Uh, no dividends were declared by any company during the year. So there's no need to eliminate any dividends received from the subsidiary or dividends received from the associate. And also as well, it says assume that profits accrue evenly during the year. So all of the revenues down to the costs. 
So what we can do is we can go through and piece all that together, can't we? Uh, let's go through. We'll do it in full. And by that, a, a full columnar approach. So we have P. We have S. We have the adjustment. And then you have your figure for the group accounts, don't we? Okay. Remember, the key bit here is that for S, it will be 612th, won't it? So revenue and cost of sales. So parents' revenue, was it 1645? Uh, 6 twelfths of the sub is 640. And the cost of sales of the parents is 1205. And for the sub, it's 495, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, what we also need to adjust for were the intercompany sales, which, if memory serves me right, were there as 80, weren't they? So I will adjust for the intra-company sales in full. And also as well, I think there was a pop, wasn't there? Uh, a pop whereby P sold the goods to S, wasn't it? Okay, so if we go back and have a look, if we scroll our way up through the question, there we go, squeezing it in at the top. We've dealt with the intracompany sales. Uh, P sold the goods to S. There's a 25% markup and more had sold half. So if I'm to work it through, it's 25, 125th of the 80. And don't forget to multiply there, is it by half? Uh, I think if you tap that into your calculator, does that give you? eight and what you can then do is there's no fair value adjustment so i don't need to worry about that there do i uh, the cost of sales do they come in at one six two eight the revenue two two oh five uh, gives me gross profit of five seven seven okay Uh, I then have my distribution costs. I then have my admin. So distribution is it 100 and then 6 twelfths of the sub. So does that give me 135? Uh, the admin you have is it 90 of the parent. And then in the sub I think it is... 25 isn't it be careful because we also have the impairment but the impairment is that within the sub we deal with the impairment and the associate in a separate line item uh, the impairment is five so that goes there doesn't it in the subsidiaries column because they use the fair value method if they use the fair value method of measuring the non-controlling interest, then yes, we have the full goodwill and any impairment means that the parent and the non-controlling interest need to take their respective shares. Uh, totaling that up, does that go through? I think and give you 120. Uh, you've then got, is it the finance costs? Uh, if the finance cost is it 55 and is it 15 so does that give me 70 uh, you then look at the, the group financial statements think well next is PBT no hold your horses whoa there you need the figure for your associate don't we so here we own 25%. The profits for the year were 200. But be careful, ladies and gents. It was a mid-year acquisition, wasn't it? So we need, is it the 8 twelfths? Uh, I think we bought it, was it, on the 1st of May? So that was 8 months to the end of December. And then we deduct the impairment. 
that there is the impairment for the year. Don't prorate it because again, that impairment doesn't need to be prorated because it is an impairment that's happened since the date of acquisition. So it's arisen in the post acquisition period. And also do not take P share of it. If you take P share of it, you're neglecting the fact that that impairment has already been calculated, having taken account of P share of the associates. Tapping that into your calculator, I think we end up, is it with 38? At which point you can then go through now and put in profit before tax. I think that's 290. Your tax line, is it the 35 and 15, which gives me 50, which totals up, is it 240 as my group profit for the year? Okay, so that there is my group profit for the year. If I total up S's profits, that gives me, is it 50? Uh, you've then got your other comprehensive income. So was it a revaluation gain? So we have 100% of the sub, which was 100. Do not prorate what happened in the subsidiary because we were told that did take place at the reporting date. It's not something that accrues over a period of time, is it? It occurs at an instant, at a point in time. So if I total up S's column, that's now 100. Uh, that then is my group total comprehensive income, isn't it? Okay, that 390. It's then that 390 that then needs to be split, doesn't it? I won't split the profit and the total comprehensive income. I'm just going to go through and split the total comprehensive income into the amount attributable to the parent and the amount attributable to the NCI. Uh, I think we own 80% of the sub, so we take 20% NCI. 20% of the 100 gives me 20, so the amount attributable to the parent is the balancing figure, isn't it? Is that your 390 less the 20, which gives you there, is that 370. Again, don't start thinking, is there any non-controlling interest of the associate? There isn't, because we do not have control of the associate. So we have therefore not consolidated it. And if we don't consolidate it, there is no non-controlling interest. When we're equity accounting for the associate, we just put in our share of the profits. So that's it. Uh, work through the example again. Make sure you're happy with it uh, so that you can then go on to answer the questions within the revision question bank. Keep up the hard work and I'll see you all in the next chapter.